build the infrastructure of the telescope on the moon using materials from the moon, that would be ideal. Because we've already been there, right? So we've been there, and it's been over 50 years since we were last there, but, and no pun intended, but we've really only scratched the surface, both from a perspective of understanding the moon. Studying the moon can teach us about the formation of the moon and the Earth, and the formation of the early solar system, as well as tell us quite a bit of information about the sun, interestingly. Uh, material coming from the solar surface can be deposited on the moon, and we can study that. Uh, but there are lots of things about the moon that we've learned in the past 50 years that would be nice to continue. So from the scientific perspective, I think there's justification for doing this. But also, you know, we as humans like to explore. Uh, space exploration is difficult. The moon, of course, is the, the nearest astronomical object, and so it's the easiest object to, to reach. And because of that, we're able to test technology uh, to keep humans safe in, in space exploration, uh, test technology for long-term stays in space, and, you know, the moon provides a stable surface that's better than a space station, for example. Uh, we can build on it, we can have more permanent stability. And so, you know, I think NASA is looking to the moon this current phase of, of lunar exploration as a both a stepping stone to more distant objects, Mars, for example, but then also uh, a longer-term presence on the moon itself. The moon, because of the lower gravity uh, than the Earth, is an ideal launch platform for going out into the, the more distant solar system. And hopefully, we can construct equipment there on the moon using lunar resources and create uh, rocket fuel on the moon in a way that's much more cheaper than we're able to do on the Earth and then, you know, pull it out of that big gravity well of the Earth. So there's lots of attractive things about the moon. We still have questions about how the moon formed, and, you know, this tells us more about how the Earth formed and the early solar system. So the moon is a, you know, a dynamic environment, but there's no erosion. There's no atmosphere and there's no wind and water and that sort of thing. And so it, it contains a record from the earliest days of the solar system. And we can study those early days of the solar system on, on the lunar surface, uh, learn more about the sun, and we can again use the moon as a platform for astronomical studies. The moon tells us uh, about uh, astrogeology, but also in the sense of it being a platform for telescopes. You know, we can, we can build optical telescopes and we could build radio telescopes using the lower gravity. It makes it a little bit easier from a construction perspective. Using craters as back-end forms for radio telescope dishes. And the environment is good uh, from all perspectives for the optical and the radio in that there's no atmosphere and so we're not looking through that that funky atmosphere that gives optical telescopes problems uh, here on Earth. And we are removed from light pollution and if we put a radio telescope on the far side of the moon, we're removed from radio interference from the Earth. And so it's a, it's a wonderful platform for astronomical studies. So we could, we could do both. We could construct uh, the telescope on the moon, which is probably the better way of doing it right, rather than, again, bringing material from the Earth. That's what's expensive. It's leaving the surface of the Earth and that big gravity field that, that makes uh, space travel difficult. So if we could go to the moon from a uh, lunar base, for example, and use that as the outpost, and then build the infrastructure of the telescope on the moon using materials from the moon, that would be ideal. Now, there, you know, certain materials would need to be brought up, but if that could be minimized, that would be best. On the, on the flip side, if we needed to, we could bring all of the materials from the Earth. That would be more expensive from a construction perspective, but long-term operation of a telescope on the Moon compared to, say, a, 
a, a space telescope or, a, or an instrument on a satellite. Uh, the moon, we can go visit and we can tweak, we can add new instruments, we can be there with the telescope in a way that we wouldn't be able to with a, with a satellite-based telescope. So operations-wise, uh, you know, you could have longer duration uh, telescopes, you could have bigger telescopes, and probably the operations, if everything is up and running and that infrastructure is there, is probably, in a relative sense, cheaper as well. Because the gravity is lower, we might be able to, well, we could build bigger mirrors, optical mirrors for, for telescopes. On Earth, the limitation is uh, not only technical, but it's also the gravity. The gravity deforms the, the, the optical mirror if it gets too big. On the Moon, gravity is, is lower, weaker, and so we could build larger structures. And so that's attractive. Larger telescope optics mean we can see finer detail in the astronomical object. And so we can build it. We have the, uh, the support infrastructure of craters on the surface of the moon that, that might uh, allow the formation of a telescope mirror, make it easier to do that because we already have a, somewhat of a support structure there. We have no atmosphere on the moon, and so we don't need to, we have a pristine view of the cosmos, just like a space telescope does. Uh, one of the benefits of a space telescope is being outside of the atmosphere, and so of course on the moon there's no atmosphere. That's the optical telescope. The radio telescope, uh, for very similar reasons, we can build much larger uh, single dishes of the radio telescope, and again using craters, uh, perhaps, as that support structure. Uh, build them bigger because of the lower gravity, and then on the distant side of the moon, on the far side of the moon, the radio interference that's, that's coming from the Earth constantly, from radio broadcasts and television and radar and that sort of thing, is completely blocked by the moon. And so for on the far side of the moon, we have a very pristine uh, radio environment. We're only detecting radio emissions from the astronomical objects. We're not being interfered with by uh, radio transmissions from the Earth. And so from that perspective, it's, it's really quite, uh, quite attractive, the, the Moon, and it's nearby. And so if we have a regular presence where we're, you know, ferrying astronauts and materials back and forth from the Earth to the Moon, then it kind of makes sense that that would be what we would be doing from an astronomical sense on the surface of the Moon. Meteoroids, uh, number one, you know, there's constant flow of material onto the surface of the moon from outer space, and there's no atmosphere to, to burn up that material as there is on Earth, right? So the Earth is being bombarded as well, but most of that is burning up before it, it arrives on the surface. So we have those sorts of issues. Um, a, a bigger issue, I think, is radiation. So radiation in the form of high energy photons, X-rays and ultraviolet rays and gamma rays coming from the sun and other astronomical objects, but also radiation in the form of uh, high energy charged particles, mostly coming from the sun, so electrons and protons that have lots of energy. And these are very damaging for biology in general and humans in particular. And this is one reason why space travel is so difficult, because we have to shield ourselves to protect ourselves from, from this sort of extreme hazardous environment. We're also outside, being on the moon, we're outside of the protective uh, Van Allen radiation belts and the Earth's magnetic field that, that protects us on, on the surface from, from these sorts of things, as well as the atmosphere blocking out gamma rays and, and x-rays. That's not happening on the moon. The moon is completely exposed. So long-term uh, presence on the moon would require some substantial shielding, either in the housing itself, which makes it expensive, or using lunar material, so building some sort of structure and then piling lunar uh, dirt on, on top of that structure, building in caves or other underground locations. That would provide enough protection. So yes, th th that's, a, that's a big concern. And then of course, no atmosphere on the moon means that the temperature uh, fluctuations are, are extreme. So during the daytime, you know, it's hundreds of degrees, and in, at nighttime, it's, it's hundreds of degrees below zero. And so, you know, again, our life support systems need to be able to take care of this. And going underground is a way of maybe moderating that and making that sort of protection a little bit easier.